Are you guys ready for your first storyteller this evening? I want you to give this woman a very warm welcome. She is a wonderful person, a fellow comic. She's a founder and producer of the wonderful Les Stand Up Comedy Showcase in town. Yes, some of you have been in Curious Comedy Theater, one of the best comedy shows in town, as just voted by the Willamette Week, top five comedy shows in town. She's one of my favorite people, and you guys are going to love her story. Please put your hands together for Kirsten Koopenbender, everybody. You guys, Amy Miller. Oh my God! You guys, microphone. Um, that was my failed attempt to use a microphone stand. Um, this is a story about my failed attempt to stalk a celebrity, <laughs> which led to one of the greatest experiences of my life. Um, when I was 16, um, they brought River Phoenix to me. Um, they brought River Phoenix to town to shoot my own private Idaho that makes me 41 years old. Let's get honest. <laughs> I don't want you worrying about that later. Um, I'm older than I look because I'm gay. Um, <laughs> let's just get that out there. Um, okay, here's what happened, guys. I'm living my life. And, um, well, a little backstory. I have loved River Phoenix since the moment I saw him. Um, and that was uh, when Stand By Me came out. And Stand By Me came out. Yes, let's clap for Stand By Me. Sorry. That's, that's better. Um, so uh, that movie came out at a time when my life was total chaos. Uh, my parents had uh, divorced and turned into teenagers. And my sister, I didn't know where she was. I was living with step people. And I just was in Florida. <laughs> um, and I was lost and having a horrible time, and that movie came out, and um, it was my homeland. It was Oregon, and uh, it was youth, and, uh, and river, and, uh, and a whole beautiful set of boys, which I wanted to be. Um, I wanted that. I wanted to be back in Oregon, just wearing like a white t-shirt and jeans and trying to find dead bodies. That's all I wanted. Um, so my obsession began there. Um, and then also he was in that movie Running on Empty, which again I felt like was a parallel for my life because um, you know, they're, they're on the run because their parents did something, they screwed up when they were politically protesting and they killed someone, way to go. Um, which doesn't parallel my life, but I felt like I was like on the run at the mercy of my parents and um, I felt like I could relate to this guy again. I was in love with him, let's just be honest. Um, cut to 1990, 1991, I'm in Portland, and uh, somebody said, River Phoenix is here, he's gonna be on Gus Van Sant's movie, and um, it, just, it had just happened, uh, Drugstore Cowboy had just come out, and that was uh, another wonderful movie with Matt Dillon getting shot, um, yet again. Um, he lived, he always lives. Uh, but it was, I guess Vincent was on fire and, and was bringing my hero to town. And so I went downtown. Somebody said, they're shooting at the Galleria. And uh, so I marched downtown and I was stalking the building. Um, I did probably like 25 laps around the Galleria and um, was getting pissed because I was like, where the fuck are they? Um, and I was a teenager, so I got bored. And um, I stomped off. <laughs> and I'm stomping away and um, two blocks away, uh, this woman comes run, running out of a building and she runs into me and she goes, hey, they need you in there now. Come on now. They need the background now. And I was like, Wait, what? Um, and she said, are you with Idaho? And I was like, because I was a teen, I was like, this is Oregon, lady. <laughs> and she was like, oh, sorry. And then she started walking away and I was like, Idaho, Oregon, what about? Wait. And so I go chasing after this woman and I was like, hey, hey. And she was like, go away, go away. And I was like, wait, listen, listen. She was like, I'm busy. And I said, hey, lady, if you thought I should be in the movie, then maybe I should. <laughs> and, and she said, go away. If you, <laughs> and she said, if you want to be an extra, go to talent management. That's who's handling the extras. And I was like, I'm going there right now. And I went to talent management. Well, first I went to a phone booth, because that existed. And I opened a phone book and I found the place and I marched straight up there and I said, this lady told me to come here. She said, I'm extra. And um, the lady was like, okay, took my picture, put it on a huge stack of pictures. 
and forms, and I went back to my life, and I thought that was a pretty fucking cool story. Hey, look what I did. Um, two weeks later, Yvonne called from Talent Management Northwest, <laughs> and I just got home from school, and the phone rings, and I pick it up, and she's, I said, she said, is Kristen there? That's not my name, but I said yes, uh, and she said, hi, this is Yvonne from Talent Management. I'm just calling to check your availability for the next couple weeks. I was like, huh? And she said, um, well, Gus was here and he picked a few people, blah, 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 blah. Would you be available? And I was like, uh, um, Gus, Gus Van Sant had selected me uh, <laughs> among very few other young people to be background at, in their film with River Phoenix. I was in the movie. I got to be in the movie. <laughs> Thank you. Um, and I did scream and I did drop the phone and I did cry for like a whole day. Um, and then I was in a movie, and I was, I was in, um, so I'm not gonna take you through every moment of this experience, because it's long, but I will say this. The first day of shooting, um, I learned the word grungy. I'd never heard it before, it was a brand new word. Um, I thought she was saying grimy over and over again, but she's like, not grungy, you need to be more grungy. It's the same lady. Um, she didn't think my outfit was grungy enough. Um, so now I know what that means. But um, the first day of shooting, I got to pretty much live out every fantasy I've ever had. Um, the first scene was eight of us running through the hotel after the cops are busting down the door. So my first moment on the set was about 10 minutes and they said, okay, let's get you, 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 you upstairs. Now run away from the camera. I, was, I had been rehearsing for that like my whole life. I still, I didn't know that that was an important thing I'd been doing, but I was like, you know, always, always in a chase scene of my own imagining, so I was fucking nailed it. <laughs> they had me do it over and over and over again. It was so good. Um, the next thing that happened was um, I was in a room with him, and I, uh, I, ooh, I, I came out that we were going to shoot a scene, and they said, okay, we're going to need Keanu and River and Flea and Bert, and I was like, River, 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 and... Uh, they're like, okay, go get a snack. It, we're almost lit, whatever. Words still didn't know any of the, I was like, oh, okay. Um, so I went to the snack table, which is called craft services. I don't know why. Uh, and I was just, um, just about to grab some cucumbers when uh, somebody walks in next to me, and, and it's a man, and he's, uh, he's writing on a paper plate. And I was like, it's him, 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 it's him. Don't look, don't look, don't look, don't look. And I just grabbed more cucumbers because I knew he was a vegetarian. And <laughs> I was like, I am with you. Uh, don't look, don't look. And then I just like had a handful of cucumbers and I shoved them in my mouth. And then I heard his voice and he said, hey, can you keep an eye on this? They keep throwing it away. And I looked and he had a plate and he had written river uh, on his, he was recycling. Stop being a god. Just stop it. <laughs> um, so that experience, that was the day one of two weeks of all kinds of things, including me accidentally getting a close-up. Thank you. <laughs> and I want you to know that like, being an extra is nothing like what I'm describing. You just Normally, you're like a piece of furniture, and they don't treat you well, and you don't get to meet your idols. But um, I, yeah, that, that experience changed my entire life. I went on to make my own movies to travel the world, be in bands, and do anything I ever thought I should do, including make a weird lesbo comedy show, and all because I was willing to fail miserably at stalking. Thank you very much. Let's hear it for Kirsten Koopenbender, ladies and gentlemen. Wait, don't leave. There's a little question and answer portion. Oh, cool. Um, it doesn't sound like you failed at stalking. It sounds like you were the best at stalking. <laughs> I'm confused about this story. Well, I never found him. But you saw his plate? Okay, I failed at failing to stalk. This explain. so you don't, maybe you don't know this. I've just learned this about you, but Stand By Me is a movie I've seen more than any other movie. I'm obsessed. Oh! This explains so much of your aesthetic and probably why I'm sort of in love with you. Oh! Oh! <laughs> I don't know what to do with feelings. Do you feel like you got <laughs> some of your current aesthetic from your early river obsession? It's entirely possible. 
It's entirely possible. I, I mean, decided, look at your shoes and jeans. Oh, God. Come on. I did, Relax. There was a period after <laughs> my own private Idaho where I wore uh, red jeans for like three years. Yeah. But you didn't pick up any of the stand by me. Like, do you ever like roll up some cigarettes in your white T-shirt or oh, whatever? I have. I have. <laughs> I have real weird feelings about that movie because he's so, he was age appropriate when I was in love with him and now it's very much not age appropriate for me because he's 12 and also dead. Uh, dead. So I, I, I might have necropedophilia. Oh. I don't. Is that a thing? It's something you can work on. How do I work on it? <laughs> Siren Nation. Do feminist oh. acts. Feminist acts of <laughs> kindness. And also, just know that he's actually 45 this year. Yeah, I shouldn't be focused on my boy craziness at this event. You guys are right. You guys are correct. <laughs> they picked the wrong host. <laughs> you brought up River Phoenix. I love him. I still love him. How do you feel about your performance in the movie? Uh, pretty... Uh, Okay, two things happened. First of all, my first like few days, other than the really good running away from camera that I, thank you, very good work. I'll show you what it looked like this. So good. Really so good, good, thank you. Um, then um, there is this part where you're supposed to just be like naturally in a room while they're having a conversation. And still, it was day two or three, and I was like, River Phoenix, River Phoenix, River Phoenix, River Phoenix. Um, so they, they're like, just, just, you know, don't participate in any of the action and don't look at anyone in the, just, you know, be in the room. And so I leaned on a chair like this. So cool. <laughs> that is so cool. For like 30 minutes of a scene. Like every time they come back. I'm like <laughs> That's amazing. So that so was good work. I uh, can't wait to see this. Yeah. Well, I have a whole, uh, there's a moment where just my, the close up happens because I put lemon juice in my eyes. What? What? Yeah. This is well, commitment. There was this thing. I knew it was like a sad scene because the character had died. And then um, they're like, okay, we're going to go in and have like kind of a funeral for Bob. And so I was like, whoop, um, from the craft services table. And it had lemons on it. And I was like, nyeh, nyeh. <laughs> and I was just kind of like fucking around. And then while they're shooting it, Gus Van Sant's like, this is good. Get this. And I was like. <laughs> and then my head later would be 20 feet tall. That's amazing. <laughs> All right, let's hear it for Kristen Cooperbender, everybody. Thank you so much. Thanks, you're the best.